Are you really saved? And if you are, how do you know? Well, we're talking about it today on Morning Miss. So if you're ready, then let's go. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, be sure to like, share, as well as subscribe so that we can make it through this life together with the help of God. 94% of Christians accepted Christ before the age of 18 which means most of us have been saved for a really long time, which also means that we probably go through a lot of moments where we're like, are we really saved? Am I really saved with all the things that I'm doing and thinking and saying, am I really saved? And it becomes a trick of the enemy to make you feel as though you have to redo what's already been done. So before we get into all of the goodness of, of what the word of God gives us concerning this, Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for its activeness. And we thank you, God, for all that it does in order for us to be stronger believers and disciples for you. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for the wrong that we've said, done, and thought. We ask you, Lord, to bless every listener, every person that is understanding my voice, and every household represented. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture that we're using today is Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. This video is intended to encourage the believer by giving factual examples of what salvation is and what it is not as well as offering practical ways to navigate our Christian life in Christ. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 10 is crystal clear. If you can openly declare what you already believe in your heart, that Christ was raised from the dead, you are saved. Salvation is true repentance. True repentance is defined as a renouncing of and a turning away from a previous mode of thought or action. Once you become saved, that is what you will become. That is what your life will become. A life of true repentance and a turning away from the way that you thought before Jesus Christ came into your life. And it is a continual thing. You may not necessarily need to rededicate your life and recommit, recommit your life often, but you will need to repent often. You will need to confess often. We will have to openly declare and believe in our heart that what we are participating in is not of God. Anything that is unrighteousness is sin. So once you become saved, you will then live a life of true repentance. So in order to bring that to the forefront of our mind, allow me to read this excerpt from a writing that I wrote. Belief in Jesus Christ. Once a person confesses their belief in Jesus, it is then up to them to use the word of God as a tool for righteous living. The Holy Spirit then girds up the believer in his or her knowledge of the word of God to push them toward the righteous living that they should have learned about during their study of the word of God. In a moment of decision, the Holy Spirit then calls that word back to remembrance in real time so that the believer has all the information that they need to make a righteous free will decision. 
If the believer chooses to ignore the aid of the Holy Spirit and chooses their own way or any way other than the word of God, the believer is then required to repent or renounce that activity, thought, or declaration and then continue forward in that same repentance. I hope I'm explaining this in a way that is helpful. If not, please just write in the comments, huh? <laughs> Salvation is not based off of how much you shout. It is not based off of you speaking tongues or speaking in tongues. It is not based off your good deeds. It is not based off of anything that you could humanly do to tip the scales in your favor. It's not based off of any of that. And the very main thing that is important to us as believers, as those who may have been saved for a while, is that it's not based on your memory of your conversion. You don't have to know what day it was when you were saved. What do you know now? What do you know and openly declare now? It doesn't matter what if you cried or if you passed out or if you were slain in the spirit. It does not matter. Romans 10, 9 and 10 is very clear. If you openly declare and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you are saved. It is as simple as that. The first thing you must do is never doubt in silence. Never fall out of relationship with Christ and not reach out to someone who you know or who you believe to be a Christian as well. It is through wise counsel. It is through many advisors that plans go well. And many advisors, having small group, having someone that you can talk to that is praying for you and with you helps you along your Christian journey. So don't do it alone. Do not doubt in silence. If you want to reach out to me, you can email me at qculturekingdom at gmail.com um, and we can speak through there. If you're having doubts, if you're having uh, moments of weakness in your Christian faith, definitely reach out to someone that you trust that the Holy Spirit is leading you to speak with so that you can be girded up through the Holy Spirit to continue on in the faith. The next thing you can do is man up. Take responsibility for what you are doing. If it's not lining up with the word, you need to renounce that and repent of that, which means turn away from and don't turn back. That is simply put. Simply put, maybe not simply done, but God even gives us a solace in the word for that because he says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And I could be definitely paraphrasing and probably jacking it up, but it is found in Proverbs 24 and 16. It tells you that it's not about how many times you fall, but how many times you restore yourself you go back to Jesus, go back to God, renounce, repent, not necessarily rededicate and recommit, renounce and repent because you can recommit all you want. But if you're still doing the same things, you still will have to say that is wrong, God. I know that's wrong and I need to turn from that. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. I hope it has enlightened you in your faith and I hope that it has encouraged you to pick up your word and get back in there, get back out there and try Trust God because he loves you. His, his love is never failing. He hates the sin, but he loves us. There's nothing you could do that could cause God to not love you and to not want you to be covered in his peace and his love. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and pray us out and hopefully we'll see you next time. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, God, for your grace, power, and authority. We ask you, Lord, to bless every household represented. We ask you, Lord, to give us the courage to go forward in true repentance and confession because you are Lord. Your word is true, and we trust you. We trust you, God. So we ask you, Lord, to allow us to have the courage to make decisions that line up with your word, to make decisions that line up with your will, and to make decisions that line up with your Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and God. We love you. We bless your name. You're worthy, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.